so flavor bending. <laughs> right. So uh, I spent five minutes on that, and now we're talking about Bob Boy's mom. <laughs> Maybe use TPA quince. There you go. <laughs> TPA quince. That's it. That's it. There's all there's to it. Getting good or or gaining like the ability to look where you can like add flavors to achieve like a different goal, like starts with like a pretty basic understanding of how food chemistry works and how the food industry works, right? So spend some time like reading labels, right? Read the labels of all your fucking candies and fruits and sodas and look up, even like look up recipes online, like um, like how Coca-Cola is made or whatever, right? And spend time learning like, like what all goes into those foods and like those flavors that we love because it's a lot, there's a lot more, there's a lot more depth to like a fucking cherry starburst than you would really want to ever admit to. If you look at sodas, like every dark soda on the market has like vanilla and caramel and nuts and all kinds of other stuff. Um, almonds and cherry, even just in a regular fucking Pepsi, right? All that stuff is in there and you don't taste it because it tastes like Pepsi, right? Um, so you have to look at all those crazy layers. Vanilla swirl is like the cheatest, the cheatest, the flavor bending, like cheat. Cheap yeah. You can do so much with just vanilla swirl. Yeah, Koppel is the person that I stole that trick from originally. So <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I mean, thank, thank Koppel for that. Now I just use yeah. that in everything. It's it's so it's so easy. Like there's no reason not to. Like if you're trying to make a candy that's like a soft chew of any kind, like vanilla swirl is almost always 100 percent going to be involved. You should look at every single recipe as a not if vanilla swirl belongs there, but if vanilla swirl does not belong there. <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't belong there, you should probably just move on. There's a horrific number of my commercial recipes that all use vanilla swirl. I'm not gonna lie. It's your one the one guarantee. There's probably vanilla swirl there every time. Where are you, Adam? What are some uh some tricks you lean on? Well, I mean I know what they are, but you should talk about them. Oh, uh, <clears throat> TPA whipped cream. <clears throat> I use that for like anything, tobacco dessert or bakery dessert, Any anything that kind of needs more body to it. And then I'll, I'll use the, the PGVG ratio as well for like a, a thickening effect. And then, uh, so if it's supposed to be like more of a thicker body, I'll go up to like an 80-20 and then uh, use things like whipped cream or uh, Inawera, vanilla, shisha. With the, with the TPA whipped cream, um, so that's mostly triacidin, right? Like that's, that's what's doing that. It's like 90% triacidin, I think, or 80% or something like that. Yeah, so I kind of took the the idea from the the dragon fruiting of strawberry stuff and i'm like all right well why are they doing that oh, okay and then when i like wayne put that article up on the spec sheet uh you know studying the tpa spec sheet and that helped me a lot too just getting in there and figuring out what the hell is behind it the, the taste and the smell that i'm getting and uh so that yeah, and, and then I just like I used to just like uh, hodgepodge with the creams, right? So I'd like throw a little fresh cream, throw a little marshmallow, throw a little just everything. And then over time, I kind of like uh, got into what what each vanilla had, what each cream had, and then you can sort of cut back and eliminate because they overlap a lot, like. You're just drowning the thing in vanilla and ethylmaltol and stuff if you don't really know how much these flavors are comprised of that. So those are all the things. All right. You can break down what each of those aroma volatiles do or what they're known for or what they're mostly associated with. And they have quick links where you can break down. You can get even like more of a breakdown and you can get all the background information so you can google more about it so if you want to get into like the deeper diy stuff um and then as you practice you can you can like pretty much like pick out um 
take out those individual volatiles and other concentrates that don't have spec sheets or don't have ingredient listings, right? Just by taste. After you've, like, if you've tried, uh, you know, TPA strawberry and you know it contains X ingredients and then you go through and you look at these and then you taste similar notes in another strawberry somewhere else, chances are they're using all those flavors or all those different compounds. And then when you get really crazy, you can start figuring out which foods and fruits share volatiles, which is where like bending gets to be like the most critical, right? Where you can find that, you know, strawberries are strawberries and raspberries all share, uh, you know, methyl hexanate, right? So you can, um, you can use two other flavors, right? That have methyl hexanate in them and combine them to get a more robust or realistic strawberry or to bend them to a different berry, right? So yeah. speaking of flavor bending, see this question pop up a couple different places. Um, before you really start flavor bending, you should probably try to make what you have work in terms of the actual flavors, you know, like actually coming into, like if you want a specific flavor to do something, the first question you should ask yourself is, is there already a flavor in that profile that does that job better? Do you, or do you need to start actually modifying things? I've seen some questions about like adding strawberries and stuff to, uh, to like peaches and trying to like bend stuff with other fruits and generally it's a really fine balancing act because you don't want to pull everything off profile. So, I mean, these tricks are super useful, but like the first step you should probably ask yourself is, okay, am I just using the wrong peach flavoring? Not how can I use a strawberry to make this peach do something different? You don't need to get crazy with the bending or the layering, but the option is there. Uh, flavors that share aroma molecules will, um, not only can they, only they'll bond more readily because they'll bond to their own, Right, so like butanol is gonna mesh, it's gonna bond with other butanol. Don't put butanol in your juice though, it tastes like gross. Uh, but anyways, exactly. And you can identify like what's causing the off notes in flavors, right? And then in, when you're using a new flavor, a flavor that's new to you, you can identify some of those by taste after you're used to learning to separate it all. What about the pepper and ice cream? That's all. That's all acetylpropanol. Yeah, um, it's acetylpropanol. Really heavy concentrations of acetylpropanol end up tasting like black pepper to a pretty sizable chunk of people, and just so turns out that a lot of the really rich TPA flavors just dump acetylpropanol in there. <laughs>